I was walking my five-year-old daughter into kindergarten this morning, and admittedly, I kind of checked out on sports stuff about 8 o'clock last night, got the kids to bed. Jane wasn't feeling well, kind of made sure she was cool. Decided to go watch two episodes of Yellowstone. Didn't really look at Twitter. Didn't look at it while I was getting kids ready to get out the door this morning. And um, we get out of the car, and Ava Montgomery speaks to this little girl who's in her class. And the dad goes, man, that was crazy on Twitter last night, wasn't it? I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I assume that this is related to Lane Kiffin. And then, you know, a couple of messages. Hey, what do you? I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. But here's what I know. If somebody's telling you definitively what's going to happen, they're lying to you because they don't know. Yeah. I took, they don't know. I and the, the few people that do know aren't talking yet. Like, I, I know what my buddy Brandon Walker's doing. I know he's, he's, he's poking y'all. But... I reached out to a couple of folks over in the state of Alabama, and they, they were just basically saying what you're saying, Richard. It's like, there's a ton of smoke right now. A ton. And within that smoke, there's probably some truth. But, it, like, you, like you said, I think somebody texted us over saying they saw on Facebook, which, is, guys, don't ever get your sports news from Facebook unless you are looking at the Sports Talk Mississippi Facebook page. That is the only place. But he's like, uh, they said it's a done deal. Guys, hey, do we have one of those? We do. Oh, good enough. Boy, that do you really think? I know, right? This guy. Do you really think? think I, I mean. Do you really okay. think? As, let me finish my point here. Do you really think that with two huge games left to go, that Ole Miss told Lane Kiffin, yeah, go negotiate with Auburn. And, we'll, and whatever happens, happens. And if you're not here for the Egg Bowl because you, you went ahead and took the Auburn job, that's okay. We're fully confident in Charlie Weiss's ability to lead the program we might bring his dad in as a consultant these are all dream scenarios of mine so yeah it's pretty obvious right because i was talking to a friend about this yesterday and and i maybe i don't know how it works and and he's right but there have been conversations very comfortable saying that not Lane Kiffin and John Cohen don't text each other. How's your morning been? They're not talking to each other. But I bet my car, and, and it's not even a bet, it's it's more of an understanding that representatives have spoken. Mm-hmm. But also, the, the same representation that has spoken to Auburn is also talking to Ole Miss. There are too many people that think, well, there's word that Auburn offered, that it's over, as if, Ole Miss can't say, oh, they're going to give you that. Well, we'll give you more. Because I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And that may not happen. But I promise you, Heath Carter's not going to let Auburn offer Lane Kiffin without countering with as much as he possibly can give. People think Mm -hmm. that Ole Miss, I I read something, it it was from on three like last week. That said that, well, Lane Kiffin currently makes 7.25, so Auburn's going to have to go to 8.25 if they want to take him. And I thought, you are the dumb. I'm sorry to, to be so condescending. You're the dumbest person on earth if you think that 8.2 is going to get him away from Ole Miss. Like, that, you, that is ridiculous. They're not going down without a fight. It doesn't mean he doesn't leave. But th- there are too many people that think that, that, it's, that it's done right now. Because they either believe somebody trolling them on Twitter, which I'm not going to lie, I laughed a lot at Brandon Walker's trolling last night. I thought it was funny because he was getting people left and right. But a master class. Just because somebody that covers Auburn is saying that they offered somebody, that's all they said, by the way. They offered somebody. That doesn't mean anything at all. You'd be shocked at how many... Other places your coach's agent talks to. Every offseason. Every single one. I said that to a Clemson fan friend of mine earlier. I don't know who represents Dabo, but I said I wouldn't be surprised if Dabo's agent has talked to Auburn. You know what the most surprising thing I've seen in a long time was? Jimmy Sexton at the airport. 
I just assumed he had a plane and he flew everywhere he was going. Two Fridays ago, surprising. I was on my way to Sexton One. Do you think it'd be a thing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> more likely a thing than Cross One. Certainly know that. Um, I'm surprised. No, I, yeah, so so two Fridays ago, I guess he was headed to Athens for the Georgia Tennessee game. Anyway, um, hmm. yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. It appears, I mean, pretty much everybody is in agreement that Lane Kiffin is target number one for Auburn. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a big separation between him and literally any other candidate. If Lane Kiffin doesn't go to Auburn, it's a massive win for Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. If Auburn offers Lane Kiffin eight years and $100 million fully guaranteed, I'll be a little surprised if Lane Kiffin doesn't go to Auburn. Which would make him the highest paid it head would, coach in college football. And it would be $100 million mm -hmm. fully guaranteed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Auburn is going to do that. I am curious like if John Cohen... Well, I, I'm curious if John Cohen and the way he operates the budget of an athletics department changes at Auburn. Because, I mean, there were some constraints, but I felt like there were times where John Cohen operated with tighter purse straps than were necessary at Mississippi State because that's just what he believed in. Did I say that fairly? No, I think so. There, there is a contingent of Mississippi State fans who would tell you that he sort of learned from the Larry Templeton tree, stay in the black. And and look, I mean, it, it, I think Mississippi State is plenty healthy financially in its athletics department. There's a, a great deal of, um, like, kudos, good job that goes along with that. But you're operating in a business where you probably better be pretty close to zeroing out the budget each year. Like, saving money does not get you ahead in the SEC. And so is the way he manages the budget at Auburn going to change from the way he managed the budget at Mississippi State? I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I mean, I genuinely don't know the answer to that. I think Ole Miss is going to be as competitive as it can possibly be. I, I have I, I've reached out. It's pretty quiet right now, too, like from, from people that are in the know. So people that are reporting, and I mean, Neil McCready had a report on on the Rebel Growth site, and you can like Neil or not, not like Neil. You know, Neil McCready does a really good job covering coaching searches. <laughs> he has a significant reporting background, and he does a good job on coaching searches. you got a lot of contacts and whatever. But I feel, I feel pretty confident in saying that any sourcing that Neil has on his reporting – is coming from places other than Ole Miss. It's coming from the and, agent community. It's coming from contacts on the Auburn side of things. It's coming from other. Contacts so he would have good Auburn contacts work. all the years yeah. he. Yeah. All the years he worked in Mobile. And, and that's not to say that Neil doesn't have a ton of contacts with, within the Ole Miss community as well, but I don't think people at Ole Miss are talking right now. I don't think they've gotten to the point yet where whoever's got to sign off on whatever the number is for Lane Kiffin to stay, like they haven't had to have that conversation yet. I do so know I'll the people you. who kind of control the purse strings at Ole Miss are committed to doing everything they possibly can to keep Lane Kiffin. So then I'll ask you, Richard, Ole mm -hmm. Miss reporter, when we get to early signing day, is Lane Kiffin still the head coach at Ole Miss? As you sit here today, I know if you get new information, you can change your mind. But on eleven fourteen, what is your your thought? My gut is that when it all shakes out, he is at Ole Miss. But what I don't know is what Auburn is going to offer. Right, and how desperate are thought. they to make the deal? Yeah. I, I mean, I go back Gotta to feel I mean, they are kind desperate. of. Kind of the Gotta number, feel they're desperate, Richard. Uh, uh, no, I understand that. But twelve and a half million a year, fully guaranteed for eight years. Are they doing that? 
I mean, the the number that I have in my head that's like, you know what, he probably goes if it's eight for a hundred fully guaranteed. That's twelve and a half million a year with incentives on top of the C Spire text line. Rob in Houston says the state of Mississippi will be at a disadvantage until the four year contract restriction is revised. You know, that's I think there are two very real sides to that. Does that prevent you from doing a big eight-year, $80 million contract for a football coach? Yeah, it does. Does it also prevent you from doing an eight-year, $80 million football contract? Yes, it does. I realize I just said the same thing twice. That could be both a good thing and a bad thing, and we don't have to look far to find examples. There are some workarounds also through foundations and, and whatnot, but uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know if number of years is even the issue, generally speaking, anyway. I mean, how how much have we talked about that or have you talked about that and extend beyond your media career where this state lost a coach because of the contract limit? How how much does that actually happen? I, this is a unique case because I don't know that it's ever happened. Ole Miss has a coach that basically everybody wants to coach their team, fans anyway. I mean LSU could have gone after him; they chose Brian Kelly instead. But fans love Lane Kiffin for a reason, and, and it's not just Twitter; it's the teams are good. This is a unique case, honestly. I mean, this is even more, I mean, State went through this, you know, with Mullen, but this is more than that. I feel like Mullen probably had the most buy-in he ever had at the end of year two. And there were a lot of rumors about him going out, but nothing ever really materialized as serious as what seems to be materializing right now. And then by the time you got to year like five, six, seven, eight, you were just kind of, you know, it was just part of the gig, right? It feels like if Ole Miss could survive year two, they could be in that situation where they look up and he's just been there six, seven years. 2020, there was nothing. After last season, obviously, there was there was stuff there. I mean, I think it's fair to say in hindsight that Lane Kiffin wanted the LSU job and he didn't get it. And there are very, very few, if any, college football coaches in America that wouldn't want the LSU job. Yeah. Especially when it's 90 million or 95 million over 10 years and like 80% yeah. of the contract's guaranteed. The money and the resources and the talent base, all those things. Sure. You know, the Miami thing, it depends on who you ask. There are a lot of people that say yes. Lane Kiffin wanted the Miami job. It never really got there. There were certainly people from in and around Miami that wanted Lane Kiffin, but I don't know that the people that were actually doing the hiring wanted to go that direction. And no, they never did. They they weren't firing Diaz had Cristobal not told them he was coming. Remember that saga? Yeah. 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 But Lane Kiffin got a hefty raise out of that, one that he deserved. So Chase asks uh, an interesting question. He said, when Keith Carter comes up with his number, how many more times can he do this? Because you know Jimmy Sexton's going to be on the phone every November to do this all over again. I mean, it's again, a reasonable question. How many times? How many times did Mississippi State do it? Did it every offseason, it seemed. But From the numbers were at a different scale than they are now. No doubt. No doubt. But the numbers the, the income is also were. Yeah, the uh, the income yeah. is also at a different scale as well. Um yeah, and we, you we haven't had some game changing like contracts for sure. You haven't that that's the thing here. It's I've kind of I, I Ole Miss has a financial ceiling that I think is lower than Auburn's, but it's really high, a lot higher than a lot of people that cover this sport, claim to cover this sport, think that it is. It's much higher than people think that it is, but they do have a ceiling. I've gotten to the point where if I was advising Keith Carter, and I'm probably not smart enough to be on his advisement team, but I would tell him, 
if you have to be fiscally irresponsible to keep Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, then do it. Then do it. Because there there has... I've only lived in this state for 12 going on 13 years. So I haven't seen the totality of it. But I have seen people that work that have worked at both schools. And I've heard it from fans. And fans still have the mentality that when they had the jobs here, they didn't think that they could win. Or they didn't have what it took to be able to win at the highest level. No offense to Matt Luke or Ed Orgeron. Or David Cutcliffe. They didn't have what it took to take Ole Miss to another tier. Lane Kiffin does. He's got offense. He's got appeal. He's got recruiting prowess, the ability to hire staff. This was supposed to be a rebuilding year. They're favored in Fayetteville. They'll be favored in the Egg Bowl. They are favored to win 10 games after they lost both coordinators, a quarterback, all three running backs, three wide receivers, two linebackers, a defensive end that is killing it in the NFL right now, an NFL cornerback, and a safety. And they are favored to win 10 games again. You at Ole Miss have a coach that actually thinks he can win at Ole Miss. Now, he might leave because there, it's easier somewhere else, but listen to him when he talks. He actually thinks it can happen where he is, and he's proving that it can. Your fan base has not been engaged like this in quite some time. In an era of the sport that should be detrimental to you, the NIL era, right, where, where a small state population-wise, no big city center, Smaller alumni bases, not many billionaires running around here. And despite that, Ole Miss is recruiting. They're getting players. They're fun. They have national attention. Don't let it slip. If you have to be financially irresponsible, it's worth the risk. You may end up Texas A&M, but you can't give 10 years anyway. But do whatever it takes. If Auburn gives him an offer, and he goes back to, to Keith and says, I don't want to go, but I have to if I don't get this, this, and this. Do whatever you can to give him this, this, and this. The iron is hot. You got to strike. You have got to strike. See, see, here's the, the other thing that I think you have to look at if you're Ole Miss. The team that Ole Miss, now, now I know the schedule is more difficult, when you, you pick up Georgia and you play in Tuscaloosa and you play in Starkville and you play in Auburn next year. Oof. I understand that. But the team that he will have coming back next season, and, and they're going to have to play a yeah, good recruiting class. You have to plug some, plug some holes in the transfer portal. I mean, that's the case. There, there certainly are areas where they will need to get better and need to add players. But the core that he will have coming back next year on this Ole Miss team makes next year's team look like a group that'll be in it to win nine or ten games. It'll be the most hyped Ole Miss team since you're... I've lived here. Hype. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you were Ole Miss, I think you're looking at two things here, right? I mean, the, the landscape of college football has completely changed. So not only are you looking at, okay, if, if Lane Kiffin leaves – you're going to have to replace a head coach. What does that do to your recruiting class? And I know you don't make coaching decisions based on the next year's recruiting class, but I think you have to look at that more different, uh, a little bit differently than you have in the past because you also have to look at what you could potentially lose in the transfer portal and how quickly you've got to do everything to get it all done. Hey, Dad, I know that's something that, that you've talked about with, you know, I've heard on your podcast before where you talk about, okay, if you make a decision, you know, after the Egg Bowl and you're 10 days or 15 days away from the early signing period, you know, as it, you, you were talking specifically about Mississippi State, you're like, well, hold on, you got to hire an AD right. and then an AD is going to make a, 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 a football change. And then a week from then, you're at National Signing Day, and it's just a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. But with the transfer portal window opening, there are all of a sudden a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And, and so it could certainly change the dynamic of what Ole Miss football looks like overall.